Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I have a very special guest today on the show. We're going to be talking about some really, really, really exciting stuff in the tax and bookkeeping accounting world. <laughs> so I promise, though, hang out with us. I have a very special guest today, Melissa Broughton with Busy B Advisors. And Melissa, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Brad. And, it, you know, it is an exciting topic, so... <laughs> Well, I mean, if you if you tie in like the the fact of when you don't know these things, it costs you a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> it it, it kind of gets your ears to perk up a little bit. So. Yeah, for most people, especially business owners, that tax bill is their largest uh, largest single expense. So if you think about that, and that there's a way to cut that or trim that, it it becomes a pretty interesting topic. Maybe not exciting and sexy, but at least interesting. Well, I always say that the two most expensive things that you'll pay for in your life is taxes, number one, and number two is the cost of not knowing. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully we'll tackle both of those things today. Now you are, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're in business with your husband, Eric, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, and so give us a little brief background, like how did you guys uh, get into the tax counting world, all bookkeeping, all that? Like. Just give us a little short snippet of how you how we got to where we are today. Sure, it's a, it's a good story. So uh, I came from a background in finance in corporate America, and our oldest was, oh, I think he was a junior in high school, and I was working uh, 80 hours a week, and my husband was a nurse at the time. And I really just was, I don't know, becoming disgruntled with feeling like I was missing everything with my kids and feeling like I never got to see my husband. We were like ships passing in the night a lot and we, mm. we made it work for a long time, but um, there hit a point right around 2016 when I just started to feel that, you know, that, that bit of discontentment. And we, uh, we actually, he took me on a cruise for my, for my, I don't want to date myself, but for my 40th birthday. And um, while on the cruise, you know, of course, work knew I was going to be gone. But when you're in that executive position, it's difficult to take vacations. And I think it was probably the first vacation I had taken more than maybe a day or two off in five years. And so we were in Mexico, we get off the boat, we're at a bar in Puerto Vallarta having, I mean, we weren't, you know, belligerently drunk, but enjoying our pina coladas. And I made the mistake of deciding to call the office to check in. And it was, you know, it was pandemonium, I guess I could say. My uh, my employer at the time had decided to move money that was dedicated for payroll taxes and use them for purchasing equipment. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like misappropriation of funds. He wasn't spending it, you know, on a shopping spree, but it was still money that when they went to pull funds for payroll taxes, he got all kinds of alerts and calls. And it was, you know, I, I'm on the phone with him and you need to come back immediately. And so it was just a, you know, that I was having a great time. I felt like the stress of life had finally left after three days on the water. And, and so I quit I mean, just right there on the spot, I quit my job and I looked at my husband oh, and wow. he's like, okay. So, um, you know, we, we got home and I, I had a really nice month of summer with my kids, the last month of their summer vacation. And then uh, they went back to school and I decided, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to clear my head and I'm going to figure out kind of what my plan is. Right. And so I went for a run. And in that run, I fell. And I say I fell, but I fell in such a glorious fashion that I, um, I, I shattered pretty much all of my teeth in my mouth. I broke my jaw. Oh, wow. I, uh, I, I sprained a wrist. I'm sure I cracked a few ribs. It was, it was awful. And so what happened was that recovery, which took I mean, my jaw was wired for close to a month. So that month gave me this opportunity, right? See it as an opportunity. Uh, gave me this opportunity to kind of build what my ideal business would be. And so we started the firm, or I started the firm in 2017 as just a, a bookkeeping firm. And what I realized within that first year 
when we had, I mean, ridiculous growth, just crazy growth, was that um, there was a lack of tax professionals out there that really were advising their clients before before the fact. So there were a lot of tax professionals that I was hearing from my clients, you know, at the end of the year that were saying, you know, buy more stuff. But there was this missing link of there's all this knowledge that we have that the lay person or the, the business person who's not a tax professional doesn't necessarily know. And they weren't getting what I felt was the advice and the guidance that they needed. It was, you know, kind of like in the medical system where the doctors are treating you after the fact, but there's not really any preventative medicine. And so it's 2018. It's just about to be New Year's. My husband is still a nurse at the time, which meant we never got to spend the holidays together. We had friends that uh, were you know, having this fabulous party that they did every year, which, which either I would end up going to by myself or not going to. And I looked at him and I said, you should quit and you should come and work with me. And I had it all, you know, as a numbers person, I had it all like detailed out for him and he surprised me and he said, yes. So he has a little bit of a background in finance. Um, actually I should say he is more than a little bit. He has a strong background in finance. His family owned a construction company. He was part of that. He has knowledge of things, just the medical knowledge um, and the finance side of med medicine that just, it was a different piece. It was kind of like that missing piece to the puzzle. So he, uh, he went back to school. He got all of the, you know, education needed. He got his tax license and we really have formed a partnership where we are crazy passionate about advising our clients on how they can save on taxes, but it's before the fact. So we're working with our clients um, throughout the year. Generally, we'll talk to them three to four times before that tax return, you know, gets filed. And um, the savings that our clients are seeing, I mean, anywhere from 30% up to 60% off of what they were paying, you know, based upon their previous preparer, or if they were um, doing their taxes themselves. So that's kind of my, uh, my, my origin story, if you will. That's yeah, it's interesting how a lot of businesses that you know, become successful, were like, because of a I'm fed up kind of moment, and I'm going to quit my job, you know, kind of on a whim, really, it's been building up, right. But that was just a point of, of no return. And, and then, you know, it turns into this full time, you know, business and career yeah. for you. So I, I do want to ask, I have that, like, how was your boss? How did he react to you quitting right there on the spot? <laughs> um, he was, you know, oh, that you won't stick with it. You'll, you'll come back kind of a thing. There were, there were some, um, I think I would say idle, idle threats at the time. You'll come back, but your salary will be less than what it was kind of a thing. So, uh, and, and it was, it was unfortunate because I really did. I loved my job. And I, yeah. I think this is something that a lot of parents deal with. I, I loved what I did. I loved my career, but I hated that I was missing so many things for my boys. You know, they were both involved in sports. I mean, you and I were talking about that, uh, that my family's headed to Ole Miss next week for a, a college tour, right? So to not be able to be a part of that, was it just wasn't worth it for me. But yet you still have to put food on the table, right? Yeah, I mean, it's always a balance there. But it, there's a little lesson in, hidden in there, too, about, you know, not overwhelming your employees, taking care of them, all of that stuff, yep. work-life balance for them, not just for you as the owner. But, well, let's let's jump into some of this um, tax stuff. I really want to really start with the five essential questions you should be asking your tax preparer. And the reason why I want to start with this is because every time I have a new client that comes on board, I always look at their financials, I look at their P&Ls and see kind of to establish where they're at, right? And 95% of the time, the chart of accounts and how the P&L is set up is wrong. It's just completely wrong. And, and, and usually it's because the, the contractor did it themselves. Yep. But surprisingly, I asked them and they say, oh, my, my bookkeeper did that or my accountant did that, my CPA did that. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't, like, why would they set it up this way? And usually... It's because that accountant, the professional they use really doesn't work with contractors. 
Like they just happen to bring them on as a contractor. And I really want to get into these five questions because it's just like, it's just like contracting. There's, you know, there's different levels and different skill sets and in, in every uh, trade out there, every profession out there, but you also have different levels of, you know, experience, right? And the way you set up a contracting business is not the way you would set up like maybe a, a dentist office or something. Absolutely. Similar to that. So what, like five questions, if I'm a contractor and I'm trying to find a tax professional, a bookkeeper, someone like yourself, what are the five questions that I really need to ask? I think it really starts with, you know, it's, it's, it really starts with a conversation, right? It starts with a, you need to know that that tax professional that you're going to hire is someone who you feel that you can have a conversation with. Not everybody is going to get along with everyone else. There are definitely people that I talk to and I say, you know, and I know at that initial conversation that they're not uh, a good fit for just us and our personality and our style. But but the first question you really want to ask is if they're familiar with your industry, because uh, you say, you know, a contractor's business is very different than a dentist's office. And it is. But a contractor's business may be different than the contractor next door's business. A roofer's business is going to be very different than your general contractor that really kind of acts as a handyman, right? So you want to um, see if that tax professional is familiar with your, um, at least generally familiar with your, uh, your specialty. So have they worked with contractors before? Um, do they enjoy working with contractors? Because contractors mm. are a different breed. You, you, uh, <laughs> yes. you guys and gals are, I will say, yes. are some of the most appreciative individuals that we've worked with. But sometimes, because you're out there on the job, it takes a little bit of, um, hmm, I want to say, chasing to get the information you know that's that's needed. So that's a funny way of saying stubborn. By the way, uh, yes. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so you have to chase us down sometimes yeah, and sometimes. kind of tell us. And and I I will say that we do appreciate uh, people like that in our lives to say, hey, you need to do this by tomorrow, or you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> yep. So so I think that leads to the second question of how willing is that tax professional going to be to work with you at your level so so i've i've worked with contractors that are probably the most meticulous people probably more meticulous than a, a surgeon we have several surgeons that are clients and you know i i can compare these contractors to these surgeons and honestly say these surge uh, these contractors keep better records Yet at the same time, there's other contractors that are out there and their business is going a thousand miles an hour and they are not organized, not with their finances. You know, they may know in their mind every single job that they have going on, but with their finances, they look at their bank balance and they say, OK, I've got money, you know, in there, so I'm good to go kind of a thing. So really identify as a contractor or really any business, but identify what your style is and be honest with yourself and what you need from your professional and ask them if they're willing to do that. It's a good point to bring up. Like they, they may say, this is our normal, you know, package, if you will. Mm -hmm. But if you simply ask and, Hey, I would like to have, you know, monthly meetings or quarterly meetings, doesn't mean that they can't do it. I mean, they, they probably will charge you more, but like, don't be afraid to ask and say, like, hey, this is this is the level of handholding, essentially, that I would like to have. Yep. So third question, I would say, you know, and it's kind of these aren't necessarily in order. But the third question is, is how proactive are they? Um, I used to say that the question to ask would be how aggressive are they? But I don't think aggressive is the correct term. And I also think when you say aggressive, it, it really it kind of makes some people panic. Um, so it's how proactive are they? You know, you you deserve, as a business owner, you deserve your tax professional to be as proactive as possible. And then the follow-up question, so the fourth question to that is, what is it that you expect from me? 
you know, you need to, you need to know it's, it's kind of like a going on a first date. You're, you need to know what's expected so that you can say, yes, I can do that. Or, you know, no, that's, that's not what I can do. And there are certainly contractors and business professionals out there that, that don't want, they think they want a proactive tax professional, but they really don't want that level of involvement. You know, they don't want a tax person that they talk to four times a year. They don't want somebody that's maybe pushing them. Um, and then the last question that I really urge people to ask is if they will work with you to help you either grow or downsize your business. So it's really all about the tax professional meeting you where you are at and helping you to go on the journey of where you'd like to go. We're talking about planning. Talking about planning. planning. Yep. Yeah. And, th and this is a good point too, because a lot of contractors think for most of us, uh, archaic and caveman kind of <laughs> contractors out there, <laughs> it's like, accountant is the person that does our taxes at the end of the year. And the bookkeeper is the one that does our payroll every week. And that's the capacity of which we use them at, yep. right? Which a really good professional is also a planner. Like you were saying, that's going to help you say, okay, what is your goal? Like, what are you trying to accomplish this year? I want to increase my revenue. I want to make this major purchase of a piece of equipment, you know, get capital, whatever that may be. And then your job as a professional is to help them or guide them on the steps they need to take in order to do that. Absolutely. So if you know that you're going to um, need to purchase some large pieces of equipment, maybe in the next year, maybe in the next two years, three years, that's something that you should at least mention to your tax professional. Um, it, it could work against you for them to be being, you know, incredibly, and I will use the term aggressive, being incredibly aggressive and showing your business, even though they're legitimate write-offs, showing your business taking every possible deduction when you need to qualify for a loan for a, you know, a large, very expensive piece of equipment in the next year or so. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, they're, you know, if they're thinking that, if, if they're just operating in a normal mode of like, this is what all my contractor customers do, you know, they're just trying to save taxes pretty much. And so I'm going to do all these deductions and you're over here saying, no, I have this different plan from doing that. I mean, they, they could essentially hurt you in that growth or whatever you're trying to accomplish because of their strategies that they're implementing. So Absolutely. It's, it's super critical to coordinate on, what the plan is. And, and I bring that up because not every tax professional offers that they don't do, not everyone does planning and, and helps in that capacity. And sadly I've found, and I'm certainly, you know, of course I think we're the best, right? We're the best firm out there for <laughs> contractors, but we're certainly not going to be a fit for every single one of your listeners. But what I can say is, is that that relationship with your tax professional should be there's somebody that you should feel that you can pick up the phone and call if you have a question if you're looking at you know purchasing that piece of equipment or if you're not sure about uh funding an educational plan for your kids and how that will impact your taxes there's so many different there's so many different pieces that your tax professional should really be somewhat, and I, I love this because I get a lot of laughs when I talk to talk to contractors at like conventions and things like that, but your tax professional should be intimately involved in the details of your life. And uh, that always, that always gets a little bit of a chuckle from, from you, yeah. you guys. Well, it's true though. It is true. It is. I mean, it's, it's really just kind of one step away from a financial advisor, you know, who should be intimately involved in all the financial aspects of your life. So absolutely that tracks completely. Okay. I want to make a hard pivot now okay, and talk about what you, what you put on here to, uh, to prompt you on is why the tax system is rigged and what we can do about it. That's, oh my that God. My attention. The tax system is so freaking rigged. It's, it's written, <laughs> you know, it's purposefully written to be dull and dry and very wordy and it kind of meanders but doesn't get to the point there's lots of things that are ambiguous about it um 
you know, if, if you were to read the, the full tax code from cover to cover, it would take something like 11,000 hours. I, it scares me when I meet a contractor who's running a multi-million dollar business and they've been filing their taxes themselves. I'll, I'll just say that you, oh, yeah. you definitely do not know all of the, um, all of the benefits that are out there. And it is most people's, you know, what, I don't know, inward compass to be conservative and that conservative nature is going to hurt you, or at least have you spending a lot more money on your taxes than you need to. But don't you think there's like, so I have, I have several clients right now who are jumping ship from their tax professional because the tax professional got them in trouble. So like there's going to be a, a, you know, a much higher level of skepticism just like any consumer would be with contractors. I mean, contractors definitely have a, you know, bad reputation of not doing well and, you know, scamming people and ripping them off and so on and so on. We know there's bad and good in every industry. Right. So like how, for me, the first thing when you said that is like, that makes me concerned that if someone is doing certain tax loopholes or, you know, being aggressive with some of the, the deductions and stuff that in the end, I'm going to end up, getting in trouble because I'm the one responsible, right? Like I can't say, well, I didn't know, right? Ignorance is not a defense of the law, right? So how do you, like, how do you, I guess, rectify that of like trusting the person that you're hiring, but also if you don't have any knowledge in that area, knowing like if they're doing the right thing? So I'm going to answer you with a story. Um, okay, we, we had a client and this was probably five or six years ago. He owned a small construction company. He did kind of jack of all trades, right? General contractor did bathroom remodels, but would also come in and, you know, if you needed some handyman stuff done and he had done incredibly well, um, owned a warehouse and when he, you know, was probably three years, uh, three years before he was getting ready to retire. Um, now I'm going to say this, he was a friend, he was not a client. So we would watch all of this stuff and just kind of go, ah, we hope for the best for him. And he was the, the fella who definitely would go for the cheapest. So if he could find, you know, somebody who would do something in trade, that was his way to go, right? So he used um, a tax uh, professional that did um, work in trade for him. And it was at the same time that he sold his building. Hey, just a quick time out from the show. If you're a frustrated contractor who's dealing with low profit margins, stuck working on the tools every day or doing free estimates for people who are never gonna hire you in the first place, I invite you to my private contractor community, The Profit Club, where contractors just like you are adding two to three times more profit each year without producing any more jobs and finally getting completely off the tools to never do another free estimate again. So if you're ready to increase your profits, stop doing free estimates and get off the tools, then all you have to do is click the link in the show notes to learn more about The Profit Club and see how I can easily two to three times the cash in your pocket give you a proven sales process that will convert more jobs with ease and get you off the tools once and for all. And the best part is you can do all of this without having to produce more jobs than you currently are. Click the link to learn more. Now let's get back to the show. He, uh, taxes got done. He was thrilled. He got money back, all of that stuff. And, um, we ended up talking to him about this maybe two or three years later when he got a notice from the IRS saying, hey, you didn't uh, you didn't pay anything on the gains from the sale of that, you know, multimillion dollar building. And that becomes an oh, crap moment. So to answer your question and to follow up on your statement, yes, as a business owner and as a consumer, as a taxpayer, you do need to understand that the, the buck, so to speak, stops at you, even though you have a tax professional that prepares the uh, tax return, you still need to know and understand every single piece of what's been prepared. So 
The review that you should be doing with your tax preparer is incredibly important. Um, I think it's when it comes into play, the importance of feeling like you can have a conversation with that tax professional. I think a lot of blue collar individuals well, I mean, my, my dad was a mailman, right? Like I, I get it. He walks into his financial advisor and he initially was incredibly intimidated. He felt like um, this person knew more than he did, so he shouldn't ask questions. And so my heart really goes out to the hardworking professionals out there, contractors, other professionals who feel intimidated by their tax preparer and don't ask questions. Everything that your tax professional is doing, everything that you're recommending, you should be having a conversation with them on and having a conversation with them until you understand it. Yeah, but if I do that, then my ego is going to take a big hit, Melissa, because I won't know all the stuff that y'all just pretend like I know what you're saying and shake my head like this and then. Well, a good tax professional uh, will be able to uh, break it down and explain it to you. I promise. <laughs> If I can get my dad to understand it or my grandma to understand it, I, I can uh, I can help just about anybody. And just to be clear, we're not talking like you should know all tax code. Like nope. We're not saying you should read the tax code. We're just saying you need to understand some basic, like why did your accountant file this deduction or why are they doing this depreciation or whatever? Like you yes. don't have to understand all of it. You just need to understand why they're doing something for you and they should be able to explain that for you. Yeah. Absolutely. So be willing to ask questions and be willing to step outside the comforts, your, your own comfort zone. Perfect. I, I, I want to talk transition a little bit here for some newer people that maybe are listening to this and they're trying to, you know, get ready to start their own construction business and the, how important, I mean, I know this, but I want you to share with this, like how important it is to make sure your books and everything are set up from the get go as someone who's went back and like changed their books like four or five times over the years because it wasn't set up correctly. And when, when you're starting out, we know like usually most of the time we don't have very much money. Like most contractors, they don't have a, a large budget. And so they're really trying to save money and I get it, but I can't stress how important this is. Can you touch on that? Like for a new person who's starting up their business, like what's some things that they need to look at or, or consider you know, kind of like a checklist, if you will, of what, what they need to go through. So uh, making sure you have a separate business bank account is huge. Oh my I, gosh. Yes. I'm not sure why it seems so, uh, it's like a trend with the last few contractors that we've spoken with, that they're just kind of commingling all over the place. Uh, because it was easier and that's really the that's the reasoning behind it so take the time open up a separate uh, ch a checking account at the very least for your for your business that's a number one the second one and this one may surprise you you don't necessarily need to hire a bookkeeper when you're first starting your business I know that that seems uh, a little silly that you know somebody who half of our company revenue is is bookkeeping services but I am not for selling people something that they don't need. If you are running your business and you have the time to tend to your books, at least, you know, once a month, once a week, um, do it yourself. There's nothing wrong with doing it yourself. Your tax professional can help you and guide you on a good chart of accounts to set up. But the biggest, really biggest thing I would recommend is to invest in an accounting software. Um, we use QuickBooks Online for all of our clients. That's, that's who we recommend. It's easy to use. Um, and I would say the other piece of it is when your business does grow and you're wanting to offload that task, it's relatively easy to find professionals out there that know how to use QuickBooks Online. So... So follow up question on that. So if I heard you say this correctly, like getting up, getting the chart of accounts set up. And if you don't know what that is, it's just how is your money basically yep. labeled in your software or whatever bookkeeping system you use. That's one of the things that I was kind of alluding to of like not having it set up correctly. And um, so like, even if they, if they're not going to hire a bookkeeper, 
it's still worth it to just find someone that they can, you know, trust and then have them set up their books for them, even if that's all they do. Would you recommend that? Absolutely. And so we'll have tax clients that we will set up there on the, you know, on the bookkeeping side of things. We'll go in, we'll make sure that their QuickBooks is set up correctly. We'll make sure all of their accounts are connected. And then maybe it's a quick training session. Um, to make the client feel comfortable knowing what they need to be doing. But um, I do that, that gives me an excellent segue. So we just published, or I just published a book that is kind of dedicated exactly to what you're talking about. And I would love to oh, really? offer all of your listeners a free um, copy, a free electronic copy of the book. Uh, it's called oh, The wow. Four Hour Bookkeeper. And essentially, it really talks about the, you know, making an appointment with yourself to do the bookkeeping. I think there are a lot of uh, contractors out there that want to do it. They have a desire to do it. But when they go to sit down in that chair to do their bookkeeping or the book work, they feel so intimidated because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And they spend, you know, 40 minutes just being frustrated and nothing gets accomplished. So would love to offer that as a gift to your listeners. Well, that's, that's, uh, amazing. Thank you for doing that. Sure. I'm sure you have a link to that. We can, we can put it in the show notes. I'll get that information from you. That way you guys, if you're listening to this, you can go pick that up. Um, was not aware you were going to do that. So Surprise. I don't even know what the book's <laughs> about or anything about it, but we'll find out. <laughs> awesome. Um, what was, I was going to say something and I, and I just, my mind just completely escaped me about the uh, starting out. Oh, I remember. So, and I want to get, I want to get your opinion on this too. Most of us would agree that QuickBooks is probably the best option for contractors based on what they have, but we also know that they're pretty expensive for what they, you know, what they charge. I've recommended to some contractors if they're, if they're brand new, if they're just a one man show and they're not really doing a ton of expenses and stuff, like maybe the handyman, that's not really has a moving parts to look at wave wave accounting. And then once you kind of get a little more complicated, you could always switch over, export all that information. It should sync up right away. What's your thoughts on that? Is that a good advice or bad advice? You know, I think, I think you get what you pay for. I think you'll end up pe paying more, when you do decide to do the conversion over, you'll kind of you'll kind of put yourself in a spot of uh, having to find a professional that's able to do that conversion, and that can get pretty expensive. It's not that it's bad advice. I mean, it's better to have an accounting software than no accounting software. Um, I really would recommend. Uh, I, I'm still going to go back to, I, I, I do understand it's an investment, but you're looking at realistically an investment of about $25 to $35 a month for a QuickBooks online subscription. And oh, it was way more than that. And well, so reach out, I guess, let me say this. There, there are special discounts that certain firms have access to. Um, oh, okay. That's yeah. Right. If I go online and get the contractor version, it's about 90 something dollars right. a month. So there's, there's, uh, there's different ways to get that price down. So I guess I'll offer that too. If any of your listeners would like to reach See, out that, just to get a, a significant that. discount. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another benefit. I did not even, was not even aware of that. They offered that for their you know partners and stuff. Well, so. All kinds of surprises for you today. Perfect. <laughs> See, that's why I asked. <laughs> there so, you go. There you um, go. I, I used uh, QuickBooks in my, in my business and even really like when they first came out with the quickbooks online i i jumped ship to that even though it was a little more expensive right uh it was just a lot easier for my accountant to get access and do all that stuff but in in my coaching business i just use wave and that's just simply because i don't have i'm not buying materials i have very few moving parts and so it's very easy for me to just do that in that software but i yeah i definitely would encourage you if you don't have that yet, if you're starting out, seek out the advice of a professional like Melissa and get your book set up the right way. Cause it's going to make a world of difference as someone who's had to like reconcile years worth of, you know, books like six, seven times because one little thing was wrong. <laughs> I can't stress enough how 
frustrating and time consuming that is and not have it set up. So definitely would encourage you to go out and make sure it's set up by a professional and then, you know, seek them out to maybe get the, uh, a little bit lower per, uh, subscription on QuickBooks if you can. Yeah, absolutely. So. Reach out to us and we'd be happy to, uh, to help you get that, get that, uh, discounted price. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Moving on. So, uh, what, what is there? Okay. This is, I, I don't, I don't want to like get put you in a situation where you have to give out tax advice. And I know you won't do that, but what's, what's the big thing around, um, uh, your, how you form your business corporations, LLCs, S corps, like what, what do we, I don't know anything about that. And I'm, I'm just pretending like I'm a new contractor. I don't know anything about that. What do I need to know? What do, what do I got to do for that? So this is this is where I'll say my disclaimer of this show yeah. is, of course, for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> um, I go. do I do highly, highly, highly recommend if that's something that you're even curious about um, to reach out, reach out to us. I'm not going to say this is an open reach out to your tax professional because there are a lot of tax professionals that cannot explain what we're about to talk about, reach out to us, schedule a consultation. We'd be happy to walk you through it so that you understand the choices that you have. That's Perfect. that's my first quick piece on that. Um, every business starts out as a sole proprietor. That's kind of the default. If you don't make a choice, you're a sole proprietor. That income um, and those expenses are reported as a part of your personal tax return, right? There's no separation between you and your business. And one of the things that can happen with that is it can slow down your, you know, your opportunity to borrow money for your business. It also means that you're automatically hit with a uh, lovely 15.3% self-employment tax. So yeah. that kind of sucks. Um, you cannot put yourself as a business owner when you're a sole proprietor on payroll. So you can't have W-2 reportable wages, which can make it more difficult uh, for you personally to get loans for anything, right? So we're all taught, it's, it's all really about money. And if you have the need to borrow money, um, but it's also the paying that, you know, 15% in self-employment tax that just stinks. Really the place that you want to consider becoming um, a corporation is if your business is maybe around the $80,000 profit line. And I say that because you do have a payment, at least in California, you have a payment that's made to the secretary of state if you're a corporation. So you kind of have to balance the savings versus that standard payment to the, the state of California. If you're not in California, though, it's a little bit different. So really, if you've hit that, you know, $80,000 or more profitability, that's when I think it's definitely time to uh, start looking at a corporation. Um, a corporation will also give you personally a little bit of insulation from um, your business and your business's activities. So that's that's the other piece. But there's all kinds of benefits. Um, I don't recommend that you utilize an online source for setting up your corporation. There's lots of companies online that'll do quickie corporations. And if you have knowledge of what you're doing, I would say those companies are fine, but they offer no guidance. And all of the benefits of a corporation can quickly go away if you're not doing things in compliance with the rules of operating a corporation. And just for clarification, when you say corporation, does that also include like different elected like a LLC that elects as an S corp or C corp? Yeah, or essentially. Talking about? So you've got a C corp, which is a, you know, an option. You have an S corp, which is generally our favored option for a whole okay. bunch of reasons. And then you have the LLC, which is not necessarily a business entity type. That's just kind of the umbrella that is an added level of protection over your, uh, over your business to protect and separate your business from your personal. Gotcha. And this is where the legal and the tax like really overlap each other significantly. Yep. So there's definitely some considerations on both sides of that. 
um, to, so you need, not only do you need to talk to a tax professional, you also need to talk to an attorney and really get, you know, those two, those two professions, a tax, you know, accountant, CPA, whatever tax professional and an attorney, those are two main key people you need on your team. Absolutely. Yep. So the way we handle it with clients or prospective clients is we actually have a law firm that we are uh, that we are we are partnered with. So we do all of the explaining. We take care of all of the paperwork. We take care of all mm -hmm. of the kind of upfront and client interaction part. And they're the ones that you know make sure to manage all of the legal paperwork, articles of incorporation, mm -hmm. and compliance. Well, that's a good way of doing that. For yeah, sure. we make it a little yeah. bit easier for for uh, for our clients. Awesome. So we talked about the uh, we talked about the five questions you should ask your tax uh, preparer before you hire them. We talked about some why the tax system is rigged, right? And we've talked about a new business kind of some, kind of some a checklist and ideas of what you should do, and also kind of the best type of entity you should set up for. What is the, what else do we need to talk about that I have not asked you about yet? I, I just want to go back and stress that if you are happy with your current tax professional, like if you love them and think they're a great guy or gal that don't take this show as, as, me or as Brad saying, you should kick them to the curb, have a conversation with them, you know, ask them questions, ask them if they're taking advantage of every, you know, possible tax benefit loophole, whatever it is that could benefit you have that conversation. If you're disgruntled, then maybe it is time to shop around and, and, you know, and, and look around of course, in the show notes is going to be a link on how to schedule a consultation with us. But, you know, reach out, shop around, take the time to have a conversation with maybe several tax professionals and find the one that you feel like you really connect with and that you're able to communicate with. And uh, don't be afraid to take the leap. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been very, very, very informational. Um, I learned a few things for sure. I, I took some, I got a whole page of notes here and stuff that you talked about. I do want to add one thing though, kind of based on the whole, you know, getting your chart of account set up and, and getting your entity set up. It's, it's really one of those situations where the wrong decision now, like in the beginning is going to cost you way, way, way more later on. So it's really, really important to get this stuff set up correctly before you get two, three, five years into your business. Uh, as someone who's went through similar situations, it's not fun at all. I promise you. <laughs> so. Absolutely agree. Absolutely. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Awesome. So one, one question I like to ask everybody is what is a, a book that you're currently reading or one that you would recommend? Well, of course my book, the four hour bookkeeper. Absolutely. We're going to put that in the show notes, but if that didn't count, I uh, just finished <laughs> reading um, atomic habits and Great it book. was, uh, it was pretty eye opening. Uh, before that, it was Blue Ocean Strategy. So two really excellent books that really make you kind of, in both cases, I felt like they were telling me things that maybe I already knew, but it was a, it was stated in such a way that it, it maybe changed some things that I've been doing. So uh, Blue Ocean Strategy is excellent and Atomic Habits is another excellent one. Yeah, I've read both of those. They're really, really good books. Sometimes you need to hear the same information just presented in a different way before it finally clicks. Yep, absolutely. And that's why reading, reading, and reading books, even if it's about the same topic, uh, could be very beneficial. So good recommendations. Melissa, thank you so much for being on the show and, and sharing your time and, and knowledge with my guest. We'll make sure to put all of the links to your book and to do a consultation if they so choose to choose to do with you in the show notes guys do me a favor to leave a review and let us know how we did if we can do anything different and you know where to find me on the social media just search for the hammer and grind podcast and remember until next time profit is not a dirty word